that awkward pause when Nate's looking for his unmute button. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to WASD20 Live. Here we are with Icewind Dale, Rhymer Reason. Um, we're not going to get too much into the intros today, but I do want to give uh, a shout out to our sponsor, uh, as always, Hero Forge. Uh, thanks so much to Hero Forge for supporting the stream here. They are an amazing company, and if you've never been to HeroForge.com, you've got to check it out. You can play around and maybe even build some characters while we're streaming tonight. Maybe you build some of the NPCs or who knows what. Um, but it, it's a great character builder. Uh, they now have color tools and, of course, uh, well-known because you can order custom miniatures that you design to exactly fit your vision for your character. Uh, tons and tons of options. They're always adding more stuff. And the tokens that you see on the screen today are also made with Hero Forge. So, um, yeah, lots and lots of cool tools there, portrait creators, things like that. HeroForge.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. All right. How are you guys doing tonight? Ready to play? All right. Very good. Let's get it on. The howling wind sweeps into the cave entrance where you all are. You have just made your way out of a Yeti cave. A protective Yeti mother, seeing her young die before her eyes to an arrow from Fiswick, now plummeted, lying dead at the bottom of a crevice as it fell through this ice bridge. A halfling scraggles to the side of Clay's large leg, just cowering, shivering in the cold here. It just been rescued by you all from the Yeti. The remains of other members of this expedition lay scattered about the cave. They've met their grisly demise here in the Yeti's lair. But Garrett still awaits you, and he is the one you were sent to, um, he is the one you were sent to, um, uh, look for and retrieve. And you did. And he is supposedly, as far as you know, has returned to Kerr Koenig, the town below. Uh, you can see on the map here, town in the shadow of Kelvin's Cairn, the largest peak here in Icewind Dale. So, you have completed that task, but he also asks you to look for other survivors. One you have found so far. Um, the a survivor here is named Perilou Fishfinger, and she says, and she's a small halfling. Oh, thank you so much for saving me. There was a couple more of us. Oh, one lies dead here, but there's one still unaccounted for. Asterix, she was a tiefling, and I have not seen hide nor hair of her. Let me see if we were going to, uh... Oh, uh, so, uh, Fizwick, I was going to mention that at the break. Sorry, I'm talking to Will privately in the chat. That was something for the break that we'll uh, plug for next session. Yeah. All right, so, um, the, uh... Yeah, the, the halfling is clinging here and, and just shivering and cowering, and, um... Clay has seen, and Clay, who cannot join us tonight, Ryan is not here with us, uh, he um, has, has another engagement, but um, he has seen a Yeti, and he has relayed this information to you all, a Yeti now, as you are ready to exit the cave, coming toward the cave. And this, my friends, will be a very fateful roll, because we're gonna roll to see if the Yeti notices Clay looking out the cave mouth. All right, so uh, let's see here. The, um, okay, so the Yeti's passive perception <laughs> is 13, and here is Clay's stealth roll as he tries to see if he can not be noticed. All right. Clay rolled a two, so that does not bode well. Yes. All right. You hear a howl. <sighs> and there we go. Yes. Bring on the gurgling. 
And now the Yeti uh, drops this uh, corpse of a mountain goat and rushes forward. So, um, everyone, let's roll initiative. Only Clay has been seen by the Yeti. All right, and Clay got a natural 20 on his initiative. And the Yeti got... All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, and Grokvar, you said 12? Okay. Um, uh, Fizwick and Nikos, uh, do you guys want to decide which one of you goes first? Nope, I will be putting that up here in just a second. Yep. All right, so, um, and actually, you know what? Um, yeah, yeah, I will pull up the map. One of them, one of them mappy, mappy things. All right, so yeah, I realize I actually don't have like a great map for this, but we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. Um, so where we left off here, and I will, Go ahead and share the, um, uh, I'll share with you guys in the chat. All right. And, da -da -da -da. Oh, the password, yes. I will type it in here. There it is. Yeah, last time we had some trouble when we didn't have a password, so I decided this time we're gonna, we are gonna have one. All right, so you guys, I'm um, just gonna put movie up here and I will share this with our viewers as well. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that map. All right, and now, we need a little, one minor addition to our map here for today. And we're gonna put this thing, it's still pretty much off the map, I'm gonna say, okay? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so the Yeti is probably about twice the distance that you see right here that it is from, uh, from Clay at this moment. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. So, um, well, there we go, viewers. All right, so it's probably still about twice that distance that you see right now. All right, any questions before we get going? Yeah, and, oh, here's Grokvar, okay, cool. So, yeah, and I'll let you guys decide what, uh, you know, where you are here in terms of the, um, the marching order or where you would be. Um, but I'm imagining that Paralu Fish Finger is probably right here, um, sticking next to the big strong one. And not that the rest of you are slouches by any means. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna let you guys decide um, where you are beyond that, okay? Oh, I'm sorry guys, no audio from players. What's going on there? Try saying something, guys. It looks like it's working to me, but let me try something here. Oh, we have audio, but cuts in and out. Okay. I will tell you guys, I apologize in advance. Uh, my patrons know this from last night. Just terrible internet issues, and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, it's just the last couple of days have been real bad. Um, so, you know, it'll go from, for me on, on my end, 4,000 kilobytes per second down to like 250 kilobytes per second. So I, yeah, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So, um, but yeah, let me know if, okay, only have Nate for audio. Yep, they are confirming this. Okay, I'm gonna try one more thing here. Properties, yeah, apparently. Um, gosh. Sorry, folks. Okay. I'm clicking on my desktop audio source and it is the same as my, yeah. 
I don't know what to do there. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's the solution. Sorry, folks. I'm pretty baffled by this. Let me try muting you guys and then unmuting. All right, say something. <laughs> yeah, OBS shows it coming through. Really odd. Um, let me just try going back to our, our other scene here. All right, I'm gonna mute the music here. Um, yeah, so strange. Well, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try switching to my speakers. And I'm just gonna take these off, and we're gonna go with speakers instead. Now my ears are bright red. I can wiggle them. <laughs> it's a cool human trick. All right. Um, Okay, so I can hear you through my speakers now, and let's try switching the uh, Zoom audio to my speakers you as well. A lot better, I'll say that. Like, that was like a 30%, 40% quality boost right there. Really? Yeah. I didn't switch my microphone. That's weird. It, it sounds significantly more clear on my end. Huh. All Maybe right, well, I'm going to try. Does Nate sound better now? Because it sounds better to me. Yeah, uh, Will is telling me I sound a lot better. You know what? That that'll work. I'll just tell the audience what you say every time. All day. That, that, that's it. Yeah. Perfect. Michael says all day. That's it. Yes. <laughs> right. um, I think maybe the the other solution would be to get as, as um, Alex was saying to restart the Zoom call. Okay. So the other I can think of is is OBS just having picked it up when it started. Yeah. Okay. So I did just switch the uh, the audio to our to my speakers. So. Someone let me know if that sounds any better, um, if, if you can hear a player. If you just heard Michael there. Check, check one, two, check one, two. Fizzwick faintly, someone said. Hmm. One, two, three, four. I declare some more. Truck bar here. Oh, you know what? I bet I have, you know what I bet I have to do? In Zoom, maybe I can turn up my audio. Audio settings. Speaker volume is all the way up, though. So could, could they hear? Could they hear Fizzwick faintly because they can hear it through your through your mic? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know, but I think I think you guys are right. I think we do need to start the uh, oh, the Zoom call. Someone said here will now. Okay, yeah. Everyone is very soft. I can hear them. Yeah, I'll. Okay. Uh, yeah, the new old SD card seems to be super soft. So okay. Using the Zoom super duper quick. Yeah. Um, hit the up tab on on the volume and go to your audio settings. Yep. Yeah. Make sure that all are up. Uh, the volume that you're receiving is yeah. higher and not auto adjusting. Yeah, I definitely have it all the way up for for my output levels, but. I do notice that even though I have that, the bar is not moving when you guys talk. Hmm. So I think we need to restart the call. Okay. Um, so I will send you guys a new link on the Facebook chat. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna end Zoom here. See you later. Bye. Hello, everybody. It's just you and me. <laughs> We'll figure this out. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> you guys are really helping me out here in the chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna share this link with our players. Whoop, not share screen. Participants invite, copy invite link.
All right, hopefully the players can get in here. And, okay. Here they come. They're rushing in. I'm testing one, two, three, four. How's he sounding, folks? I'm, I'm a pick, but uh, I'm a red apple. Look at me. I'm a dancing idiot. Well, I don't know what I'm something. Saying. That's something. It was something, a red apple, but I came up with. Can you hear Fizwick, folks? Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, um, no, he's, wait, wait, there was a password. There was a password that you put in. I haven't entered a password anywhere, right? Okay. No, that was for that was for Albert Rodeo. Uh, yeah. Nobody's changed anything, right? Like uh, Lance says he's used to Michael and, and Tack is nothing new. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's true. We can't blame Michael for this one. Um, hmm. Well. I can hear him. He's still, yeah, he's still not as loud as, as, as Nate is. Okay. Um, so I think the reason they can hear you guys is because you're, they're hearing you through my microphone, probably. And that's the only way they can, because I took my headphones off now. So... Hmm. I'm open to other ideas here, guys. I could stop the stream and restart the stream too. That's another option. Um, yeah, maybe. But it does seem Zoom related because, like I said, that bar is not moving when you guys talk. Is there a way you can test us with the stream still without restarting the stream? Like, in, you know, just test Zoom in some other way, in some other capacity? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I just did the test speaker in Zoom and that's working. But yeah, when you guys talk, it's not. I wonder if I need to honestly restart my computer. All right, hold on. I, I know this is going to sound really stupid. No, go. Can you mute your. Because they, they, they can hear the music, right? Oh, I don't think. I don't know. Could you guys hear the music? I guess that's one question. Um, it was pretty faint, so not not the intro music from my video, right? Yeah, not the intro music. The the music you were playing. Yeah, because I gotta see if that happens. No, that wouldn't work. Never mind, because Zoom's too small. I was gonna say I could run you back through my speakers, but yeah, that's not. Yeah, someone mentioned trying to put headphones back on. I'm gonna do that in a second, and I'm just going to go into my OBS audio settings as well. But it definitely seems Zoom related because, yeah, that bar is not moving when you guys talk, even though I can hear you. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, folks. Um, we're, we're getting this figured out. Okay, so you guys could hear the music, yeah. Something with Zoom is being screwy. So, here we are. Just you and me, trying to play some D&D. &D. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. Hope you had a great Christmas. Um, I'll just do some chit-chat while we're, while we're doing this and uh, let you know that Oh, here, here we go. Yes, Michael's Zoom chat is up. Uh, we got a Quest 2 for Christmas, guys. It's awesome. Been in virtual reality. <laughs> All right, open Zoom meetings. Hello. Um, so let me change my, uh, yeah, I have to change my input source in OBS. Okay. All right. So try saying something now.
<laughs> oh, yes. Can you guys hear Michael? I don't know, I'm asking. Can you guys hear Michael? There you go. The tech demons. Yeah. No, nothing in YouTube. Okay. Yep. Um, so let me switch this around here. Sorry. How do we get the, um, no, what is mixer? Oh, so, okay. Let me try one more thing. Audio sound settings in windows. Try that real quick. Output device. Okay. <laughs> I got to fix that. Yeah. Let me see <laughs> what's going on here. Uh, no. There we go. We're getting there now. Oh, okay, okay. So someone mentioned clicking the no, my yeah, my my speakers are at hundred. My audio is at a hundred percent on my on Windows. Um, yeah, and I've already changed the audio device to the proper one. Um, I think I might just need to restart my computer, guys. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna try one more thing first, and this might just need to be a little bit abbreviated session if, <laughs> because we're taking a while here. I'm gonna try one more thing here. Audio settings. Okay, say something, guys. Yeah, the output level in um, in OBS is still just zilch. Or I'm sorry, in uh, in um, Zoom, but in OBS it shows that you guys are clearly talking. So that's just boggling my mind right now. All right, I'm gonna restart my computer. So. I'm going to end the stream, everybody, but we will be back shortly. Goodbye. OBS. To talk about, oh, yeah, that's the halftime one. Oh, yeah. So, so Will, my understanding was we would talk about that after the, the passcode is said. Then we would say, and that, at the break, is a passcode that you might hear in the future. And if you do, in our next session, you, should, uh, you will win my, something. I get that. I totally understand. Uh, and my idea was that you're just listening for a secret phrase. And if you're not listening for the show, you're not going to hear the secret phrase. And it's going to be obvious when we say a secret phrase, but some character is going to say a secret phrase. And then you know what that secret phrase is to say next week. So that way it gets engaged the whole show, not like, hey, we're going to tell you exactly when we're going to do this. Because that, I would say, is pointless. Like, Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can do it your way. My worry is that, that we have 25 viewers. and I wouldn't worry about it now then. <laughs> okay. Let's just postpone the whole thing. All right, we'll we'll, or, we'll figure it out. All right, I don't know. We'll talk. Um, yeah, I think our ideas, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Do people Sorry. call my people. All right, live. My idea. Wait, wait, wait. Real sum it up. My idea was to give them the secret phrase to listen to from minute one. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. by the way, we're giving something out tonight. You're gonna go. You're gonna have to listen for a secret phrase, and that's gonna give you the code to enter next week. It doesn't even take twenty seconds to explain this, and then they're engaged the whole show. They can't leave. So, but. If, if I'm advertising, we're giving something away. People come to the show and they're like, well, how do I win? They're sitting, do I have to wait? We'll do it. I don't know. I, but that's, I, I don't care how. Hello, do everybody. It. I'm live. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Oh, we, we were we were arguing in the chat. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, you guys, I'm trying to do a giveaway. So, I had good intentions. <laughs> we are, we are going to talk about it. What do you think of our idea? My <laughs> Sorry, everybody. All right, I'm going to add you guys to so people can see you now. But um, Michael and Alex, can you guys say something too? Certainly. Something uh, two. Something three. Something four. Check All right. Two. Check they heard me. All right, I'm going to add you guys' video as well now. Here we go. Slowly getting there. Oh, How is everyone's see. holidays? Are, are we being heard? Yeah, I think we yeah. are. Hey, so do you guys like the secret phrase from the beginning or do you like it like dropped in the end? Like it's now it's 
<laughs> what do you guys like? Listen for the secret phrase, by the way. Yes, li listen for Nate, a secret just phrase. So everyone can everyone encourage Nate because like the this secret is one of the most stressful things that you phrase. can go through right now. Having stuff not work is like the most like you've got people here and just so everybody can root Nate on in the <laughs> the comments. This is cast, like cast your blessings upon me. Yeah, this is all right. Window capture. And make sure you're rooting Nate on and not just rooting Nate. That means something entirely different in Australia. Root, root yes. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what this means in Australia, but I don't think I, we'll have that. That seems like a conversation for later. That is a later conversation. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, hey, look, we see some people here. Hello. <laughs> We're slowly getting there. Look, it's a me. He's Mario. getting into his frame. His nice little frame home. of. Yeah, I get it. Nico is, is in the right frame of mind. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's a, uh, he eats brains. Oh, I get it. I didn't get it. I thought I did, right. but I didn't. All right, <laughs> we're slowly getting there. Yeah, my Zoom window is always. I'm gonna, have, Michael. I'm gonna have to ask you to help me someday. Figuring out why my Zoom windows don't uh, save in OBS. Uh, do you enlarge them at the get out the gate? Um, I think so. Okay. Do you use window capture or program capture? Window capture. Is that not then as you good? Are That's it. You pissed off a gypsy. That's the only thing I've got for you. Okay. Yeah. Full moon. It happens. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, and now I'm having trouble adding anyone else. Oh, good lord. That's okay. I I've got this. Let's do this. Just you and me, Nate. Yes. The others will be, <laughs> others will be voices, <laughs> ghosts floating around us. Oh my gosh. What is happening? Okay. I'm now going to remove You know that. what I thought might be really fun with Nikos, but I'm not convinced I could pull it off would be. I was watching that Kirk Cameron movie the other day with it the, where they body swap and I was like that would be awesome. I don't know if I could do the Nico's voice. It's kind of a Russian thing, isn't it? Or is it Russian? I found him. Uh, I can't remember. Rush oh uh, Nico's voice. voice. So, so I want to yeah. say this. I I'm really in grateful Navy? that a bunch of my fans have shown up in chat. I'm also grateful at the fact that I have so many tech issues that 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 they're all turning on me for some reason for what's happening. God damn it. It's you terrible. Guys. You guys are the worst. Be kind <laughs> to us. All right. Like oh, all they're being really us. nice to not you guys. Me. Not just me. All right, I got to get one more and then we'll when, then we'll be there. I just got to get a Grucky. Grucky, where you is? Hey! Not. Let's find you your home, Gruckvar. So, where I belong. One thing I'm going to talk about right now, while I'm doing this, is there is going to be an opportunity to win something awesome from Dark Sea Workshop, and you guys should pay attention to a secret phrase that will be in relation to the Dark Sea Workshop, which actually exists in this world, and there will be a secret phrase of some kind. And you should pay attention to that because if you hear it again next session, there will be further instruction. I don't know, what should people have to type in the chat, I guess? Uh, I like your idea, win. dice. Dice, there we go. So Dark Sea Workshop. Um, okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. I found Listen it. for the secret phrase this episode and then next episode when you hear it said again, you just say dice and you will get up to $70 uh, a $70 code to spend on my shop for any of the dice pendants, just the dice pendants. So you can pick any one you like, and that should cover shipping. If it's over 70 bucks, you can cough up some bucks. Yeah. That was, that was it. Yep. There's yeah. <laughs> some good stuff. So you'll get to see some of that Dark Sea Workshop goods during the break. We have some pictures and stuff, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> here we are. All right, guys, we're going to we're gonna do this Theater of the Mind just because I'm all out of sorts and maybe we'll get to Owlbear Rodeo, but we're going to do it Theater of the Mind. So you guys can kind of picture the cave there. And uh, the, the Yeti has now, uh, it is rushing you. And we have our initiative order that I was starting to write down when I realized no one could hear our players. So uh, Clay wait, was the, first. Uh, 
Sorry, sorry just just to, to clarify, the, the Yeti's Russian? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeti. Uh, he's got a, he does have a big furry hat, so, I mean... All right. <laughs> Bulls you down the air. Um, okay. And then, um, then we had uh, Fizwick, and then we had... Um, uh, Nikos. Not Rukvar, Nikos, yes, Nikos, and Rukvar, Rukvar is last. All right, so Clay is up first, and I don't know. Do you guys have any strategery you would like to relay to Clay? Uh, Clay, run at it with your weapon. <laughs> Put the pointy in in that one. I can do the. I can. Wait. Okay. Okay. I, I can put a bonfire in front of us. If you want, Clay. Okay. Run yeah. Out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Clay is going to, um, Clay wants to back up a little bit, I guess, and and give you that opportunity. Um, what? Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely just open to you guys' input on anything Clay is going to do. But I'm thinking that Clay would probably um, push everyone back uh, to some extent, or encourage everyone to get back out of sight, and because only he has been seen, and then perhaps uh, stand a little ways um, back so that the Yeti could still see him, but cannot see you. How does that sound? Th that makes sense. Can I also offer this suggestion? Yes, I, you may. If I remember correctly, the group left all of their torches lit, like wedged down into the snowy ice at the foot of the cave. So you could push us back behind that. Maybe you might find use for some of those lit torches. Yes, I like it. All right. So. Um, yeah, so Clay is going to stand back there, and he is going to, um, uh, basically, uh, just ready an action to attack if the Yeti should, uh, approach him, uh, within melee range. He has both axes drawn. And, um, okay. Good. Next up, we have the Yeti. And, um, oh boy. Okay, so, uh, sorry, what did you say about the torches there, uh, Alex? Just... They'd be right behind you. They're kind of wedged down into the ice and the snow, you know, burnt ends, lit ends up. Yep. Um, okay. You could access one of those if you needed to throw one or whack a Yeti with it or what have you. Yeah, Clay is probably actually going to pick one of them up and wield one torch with an axe. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. The Yeti is going to move and it is going to... Uh, now, remember, you guys are suffering two levels of exhaustion, unfortunately, right now. So your speed is halved. And your you have disadvantage on ability checks, okay? Um, but um, or except is it just saving throws? Except for except for Grukvar. Oh, Grukvar, that's right. Um, now, does Grukvar only have one level or zero? Zero. Ah, nice. Okay. So, um, and I can't remember. Is it ability checks or is it just saving throws? Exhaustion. Um. If you want to we'll move forward with yes. your actions, I will investigate. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yep. All right, very good. So the Yeti is going to move up, and it, it is going to dash, to, and it discards this goat and tears forward through the mouth of the cave, and it is facing um, uh, um, Clay, but it, and, and it is now within melee range of him, so he is going to make an attack, but since the Yeti has dashed, it has not been able to attack him. So, here we go. Clay's attack. That is a six plus. Oh, you know what? I should probably re-pull up, like, you know, some stats and things like that. Um, okay, six plus, five is 11. Okay, so Clay's attack will miss, unfortunately. And then he also kind of swings the torch and the Yeti just... All right, next up we have... Fizwick. Uh, so the Yeti's right in front of Clay now, right? That is correct. Can He's I not seen take you yet. my uh, flask of oil and chuck it on the Yeti? Absolutely. Yeah, now you're keeping track of how many flasks of oil you have because I know you've used a couple. Yeah, and I also bought a handful of them too. Okay, sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had the stat block up there in my the wrong window for a minute. <laughs> anyway, um, so no um, yes, you throw your flask of oil on it. That is your action. 
Would you like to do anything else, Fizzwick? Uh, hide. Okay, so you would probably move back a little bit further um, around some jagged bits of ice in the cave wall after throwing this uh, to hide. All right, cool. Okay, thank you, Alex. Disadvantage on ability checks, yes. And then speed halved for those suffering second level too. All right, very good. All right, next up we have Nikos. Uh, okay, so Nikos, um, you know, sort of um, tells the halfling to take cover inside the cave, uh, just a little bit further in. Um, and as he shouts this, he begins to gather the small moat of fire, and then as he starts to enchant uh, an incantation, casts Asganar's Scorcher in a line towards the Yeti. Um, it is a 30-foot line of roaring flame that emanates in that direction. I'm going to try and not include clay in that, even if I have to kind of, you know, sidestep a little bit to, to not hit him. Um, the Yeti must make me a dexterity saving throw or take 3d8 points of damage. Yetis are very dexterous, unfortunately. That is a 3 plus 1 is 4. So, yes, it is not oh. going to make the save. All right. Bring it uh, on. So that is a 16 points of fire damage. Now, because he's covered in oil, does that do anything extra? Yeah, I'm going to say that... Okay, so d by default, does the spell continue to burn said creature? By default, no, it does not. Okay, so it will continue to, do, to burn, and I'm just going to say probably 1d8 uh, damage per round uh, is Wait. what we'll do um, for that. And... Looking for my pen. Looking for my pen. <laughs> Man, there we go. It was. It was. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, very good. All right, uh, Michael. <laughs> would you like to do anything else on your turn? Um, softly sob. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Speaking yeah, of which, I'll, the uh, Yeti does let out let out just a howl of pain. Oh, good. Good, good, excellent. <laughs> it's harmonized with your sob, actually. <laughs> yep, so no, no one can see how brave Nikos is. Uh, very well. <laughs> All right. Very good. Next up, we have Nik uh, Grukvar. Don't, don't we also have a net placed somewhere as well that Nikos had... We rolled stashed? it up. It was, up, it was at the bottom of the, uh, the bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the but Yeti did fall well. out of it. Yeah, so someone decided to, to drop it. Into <laughs> oh, that's the, right. Into the ravine. Forgot about that. Yeah, um, Michael. I'm sorry. Could you repeat how much damage you did with the fire? Uh, sixteen. Okay, thank you. All right, Grukvar, what's up? Uh, Grukvar is going to um, let's see here. Uh, cast the spell, uh, Sacred Flame, um, which uh, is going to require a Dexterity check. Once again, from the Yeti, uh, dexterity saving throw. Um, as it comes down, descends from on high. Okay, that is an 11. Okay, um, the dexterity uh, check you had to beat was 13, so that's a hit. All right. And I'm going to roll for damage here. <laughs> One point of damage. Oh. <laughs> it could be the point of that matters. It could have been. No, it, it still could be. It still <laughs> could be. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Next up, we have Clay's turn. Um, Clay is going to... Um, oh, boy. Clay is going to hit it with his axes twice, unless you guys have a brighter idea for Clay here. That sounds pretty good. Ryan told me that... Um, Clay does not rage for reasons, so there are oh. serious reasons. I, I was going to tell Fizzwick to just stop pissing off Clay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is there anything we can do to make him rage? All right, um, that is going to be a 13 and a 22, so that is going to hit. Both his attacks are going to hit. That's 8, and that is for for a total of 12 damage as he as his axes and he just stands his ground here with this yeti <laughs> biting its flesh as it is currently engulfed in flame all right um 
Good. Next up, we have yet er, uh, the Yeti. Yeah, the Yeti is going to um, stare. It is going to actually look at um, Nikos. He's done. And it is going to uh, <laughs> gaze at you with this icy blue eyes, and you must succeed on a constitution saving throw against this magical stare from the Yeti, Nikos. So give me a constitution saving throw. You have... All right, constitution saving throw, which I am proficient in. Yay! 16. Okay. And you make the save. Um, you feel this chill sink into you, but you the, the warmth of your spirit and your bravery and the fierceness of your fight kind of shrugs it off. All right. I fall in love with the, the Yeti. I develop a strong <laughs> emotional attachment to his <laughs> icy blue eyes. I see into his soul. My heart warmed when he stared at me. <laughs> it did the opposite. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make sure I, that you don't take any half damage or anything. I don't think you do. Huzzah. All right. Um, all right. Uh, and then it is going to also attack Clay. It has disadvantage on its attacks um, because it is currently on fire. <laughs> All right, Yay. so that is going to miss. The first one's going to miss. And the second one, eight plus. He looks like he's on fire in that icon, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clay's armor class is 16. So he misses both attacks on Clay with his claws. <laughs> All right, next up, we have uh, Fizzwick. Fizzwick had <laughs> hidden in the snow, and you just see a pop of snow just flip right up, and he pops up, and he's got his bow, and he's like a little goblin Chuck Norris rising up slowly as like the snow falls off of his bow, and he's already got it cocked, and he releases a bow shot. Oh, I forgot his 1d8 fire damage, too. Sorry. Let me do that real quick. Uh, burn, baby, burn. He rolls an 8. All right. That is going to miss, unfortunately. And he says some kind of curse word under his voice, and he uses his bonus action to, like, floop, and, like, just a little try to do a puff back down into the snow. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and roll a stealth check for me, if you would. Eighteen. All right. Yeah, you definitely uh, feel like you are well hidden from the Yeti here. All right. <clears throat> Nikos, it's all you. All right. So uh, Nikos is going to uh, stretch out his hand, and uh, very similar to the, uh, the first thing, he is going to um, begin to exude this thick, caustic, viscid acid uh, which he is going to cast Tasha's Caustic Brew as he uh, launches this greasy green slime over him. Uh, it's a 30 foot long line, etc., etc., etc. Dexterity saving throw yet again, uh, or we covered in acid. All right, and. Okay, that is an 18 plus. Yeah, yeah so he makes it. Yeah. Um, all right, does he take half damage or anything, or. Um, negative. I think it. Yeah, no, no, no. It's he. It just misses. Okay. Yeah. So he uh, he just kind of ducks out of the way, and probably gives Clay a little bit little shove, um, as he does so. Uh, Nikos is going to run back into the. Hang on, let me just calculate this real quick. Uh, Nikos is going to. Uh, five ten. Yeah, no, okay, that'll work. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, Nikos is gonna run back into the cave. All right. Very good. Um, yep, so you move back further, and it is Grukvar's turn. He, uh, he tells Clay to, uh, to hold him off. All right. Clay gives a nod. <laughs> um, Grukvar mutters under his breath, uh, they all stand by. 
and he pulls out his uh, uh, war hammer and um, rolls uh, 20. Not a, not a, uh, that's, that's 16 plus my uh, modifier, 20. Okay. Not a critical hit or anything here, but um, and that's for five points of damage. Okay. So, sorry, I was getting the map set up there. So, um, sorry, what what uh, kind of attack was that? A uh, bludgeoning. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, five points of damage. All right. Yes, the yeti howls further in pain, and. It is now, so I'm gonna let you guys, um, oh, I have to send this link, so let me do that as well. Slowly getting things back to where they were here. There we go. And, uh, you can go ahead and move your tokens where you think they would be in there, but I guess, uh, you know, if Clay is right here, Gruckvar, I'll just say is right there, that's cool? Yeah, that's good. Okay, very good. And Fizwick, back here around the corner. Um, but feel free to move it if you feel otherwise. All right. Uh, very good. Anything else on your turn there, uh, Grokvar? Uh, no. Nope. All right. Excellent. It is Clay's turn yet again. Clay is going to... I feel like I'm not being very creative with Clay here. Um... But yeah, I think in the interest of keeping things moving and me not having to totally learn a new character, Clay is seeming to be pretty effective with his axes, and he's <laughs> going to continue that, that tactic. First one is a hit. The second one is a natural one. So the first one he is going to hit four. Oh man. One plus three damage. Four damage uh, with his axe. And... He continues to stand his ground, kind of blocking the path to the party members behind here. All right, that brings up the Yeti's turn. The Yeti is going to um, stare down Gruckvar and attack Clay. So, Gruckvar, I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. Okay. Um, also, uh... I have advantage against uh, being paralyzed. Is is that what this? That would be part it? of it. Yep. So okay. Um, so can I do that twice then? Um, give me the best result. How does that work? So this this would has the potential. The main effect is to well, I don't know if it's the main effect, but it does cold damage and then you're paralyzed. So I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, maybe uh, I would let you roll, make make the the throw, and if you fail it, um, I will let you. Roll again to see if you at least avoid the paralysis part. Okay. okay. Uh, I rolled a 12. Okay. So 12 is not quite enough, but if you want to go ahead and roll again to see if you can get higher for the paralysis part. 20. All right. Oh, yeah. So he will avoid paralysis, but you will take six uh, cold damage as the Yeti's gaze pierces you. And, um, yeah, you can, um, yeah, I guess if, if, since there's no paralysis, it's just that this turn only. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. And now the Yeti is going to attack Clay and it got an 11 and a 10, which gives it 17. Okay. So those are both going to hit, unfortunately, with its claws. Okay, so Clay is going to take um, nine damage as the Yeti attacks. All right. Oh, plus 1d6 cold damage. Oh, dang. Okay. Plus eight cold damage. So that's a total of 17 damage. All right. And now it is... Um, It is Fizwick's turn. Fizwick's going to try the same maneuver again and see if he can pop off one of those arrows. And he also wants to, if he hits it, wants to use his Fury of the Small, with, which lets him deal an extra three damage nice. to a creature 
with a size larger than mine. That would definitely be applicable here. Eleven? Eleven is not enough to hit, unfortunately. Oh. He right. makes out an even bigger curse word this time. Something that's just in all the lands. It's one of the worst things you can say and and tries to disengage and hide back in the snow yet again. Oh, whoops. What did I do here on... Uh... Sorry, folks. I got, our Evan, I got our Zoom chat here. <laughs> um, what is happening? There we go. <laughs> that was pretty funny, though. All right. Live is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's now going to be joining our Owlbear uh, rodeo link, guys. No! <laughs> Everyone, quick. Um, all right. Very good. So, uh, let me move the map a little bit so we can see that better, too. I don't know what I've oh, done. He also takes planning damage. <laughs> Oh yes, thank you. So uh, what I'm gonna do, if if we could, um, I'll just have him do that on your turn every time, which is right yep. now. So yep. that is five fire damage, yes. All right, and that brings up, oh, unless there was anything Fizzwick wanted to do. No, he's, he went back that the hiding again, rolled a 15 okay. on a stealth check to try to do it. Yep, okay, sounds good. <laughs> Nikos. All right, so Nikos is gonna quickly tell uh, the group, um, Pull back! Pull back to here! Quick! Uh, and what Nikos is going to do is he's going to get a mixture uh, of from his water flask and his oil lamp. And he is going to actually uh, pour the water into the, uh, the, the the actual lamp itself and seal it off. And then start shaking it. Uh, and then I... Uh, yeah, basically the, the plan is, is once everyone's across, I'm going to try and lure the Yeti onto the... Um, uh, onto the ice uh, and then use the mixture and try and make it slippery and try and bull rush or force him off the ledge there into the ravine. Not not the icy one, but the uh, the normal, the one yeah, that we've been traveling. Right, right here. I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell the halfling as well to pull back now. Okay. So you and the halfling managed to pull back, but these folk can't do that until it's their turn. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But you're directing them to do so? On their next turn? All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, they kind of look back at you a little bit confused, but see what you're doing and see that you're up to something. At least Clay does. And, uh, yes, we'll see what happens. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Um, no, I'm just waiting for the opportunity. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. So as soon as, I guess, you, technically you could, well, I guess that's kind of an action to mix it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very good. Next up, we have uh, Grokvar. Okay. Uh, following Nico's lead, uh, Grokvar uses um, all of his um, motion, his movement to move all the way back here. Um, so and then you still have full speed, right? One, two, uh huh. Three, four. Yep. Okay. That's good. Yep. You definitely can do that. So you okay. disengage and move back. Um, and uh, did you want yeah, to use disengage? use disengage? I want to use disengage to uh, avoid an opportunity attack. Yeah, excellent. All right. Um, anything else you can do on your turn? Um, no, my turn is complete. All right, very good. Uh, that brings us to Clay, and Clay is likewise going to comply. However, Clay has reduced movement. I'll give him. Say he's on that square since I kind of had him between, <laughs> and we'll say one, two, three there clay can move along with disengaging and <laughs> that is all he can do that brings us to the yeti's turn the yeti is going to move up here three and fizzwick i'm gonna say um you are still hidden here unless you would like to i guess make an opportunity attack as it passes you i will let i would let you do that yeah, definitely. Okay. Because I can always use a bonus action to, uh, <laughs> I've got cunning action where I can, you know, dash, disengage, or hide action, and I also have nimble escape, which allows me to hide or disengage. So, okay. I basically can take a bonus action. Yeah. So it is going to, right. um, oh, um, yeah. So it is going to basically keep running past you, and it's going to run up to Clay here. But as it passes you, you get to take make an opportunity attack if you would like to with a melee weapon 
Um, so you may roll for your short sword or, or uh, rapier or whatever you've got if you would like to. I'm going to... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to hit him. Yeah, I'm going to hit him with my short sword. Okay. Um, try to use that sneak attack. Yep. Um, my rapier, should I say. Uh, he rolls a... 22. All right. That definitely a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, five. All right. Very good. The Yeti is on fire. It oh, is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm supposed to roll 2d6, though. So not my. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm supposed to roll the sneak attack, attack damage, damage, right? Yep. I think. So it'd be eight. I think you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it'd be eight. All right. Cool. Um. So now the Yeti is on fire. It is bleeding as well, quite profusely, and it is just howling rage as it rushes past and is surprised by your attack. All right, that brings us to... Oh, can I use my bonus turn. action to jump back and dash? So actually, that was just your reaction. So now oh, it is oh, gotcha. your turn proper, and gotcha. you can use your action, bonus action, and move. Um, Nikos has... You have heard him yell, you know, get back, get back. So... Do with that what you will. He wants to try to go ahead and use that uh, dash bonus action to um, get behind these guys. Like, can he go back okay. here? Yeah, so it would actually be your um, action. I would recommend probably using... Uh, can you disengage as a bonus action too? I believe you can. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, so you could move one, two, and I would say three right here because your speed is halved um, because of exhaustion. That is your bonus action, essentially. So you still have your move and your action. Okay. Um, so I can shoot him again with my bow? Uh, you could, yes. I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. And if he hits with the Fury of the Small with, for three extra damage. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely tall enough where you could just shoot over Clay's head here with your bow. <laughs> 20. All right. That is definitely and... a hit. That's five. All right. And plus three of, for th Fury of the Small, so eight. Okay. And I can only do that once per rest. The Yeti is staggering. He almost goes down to one knee as he crosses this bridge here. Um, yes. Okay. That brings us to Nikos' turn. All right. So uh, with everyone on this side of the bridge now, Nikos will uh, take his flask and he'll try and throw it at the feet of the Yeti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and make, um, we'll just say maybe a straight dexterity roll to see how well you do uh, in tossing it. And I won't make it too difficult, but. Uh, 18. Okay, yes, you definitely managed to aim it where you want to. <clears throat> okay, uh, and as I do, um, I yell out to uh, Grokvar and Clay, PUSH! Push now! And I'll, um, and, uh, that'll be all I, I do on this turn. Okay, very good. Um, <laughs> I love it. Grukvar, it is your turn. Okay, um, looking to my right, I see Clay is looking pretty exhausted. Because and it is exhaustion. also, I'll just add this, it is Clay's turn next, so if you wanted to coordinate anything between you and Clay, uh, you could do that. But yeah, go ahead. Okay. One um, leggy. I think, knowing he's exhausted, I'm a little concerned about his ability. His, you know, he's a strong guy, but he doesn't have a, his, you know, he's not, uh, you know, topped off, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And um, so I am going to try and do this on my own. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, sorry, scratch that. Just one second. So I, I could have Clay help you, although he would be helping you with disadvantage, you know, and you just have to yeah. roll a, a 10 or higher. Um, you know what? I... Uh, it's always best to work as a team. So what I'd like to do instead is ready an action. I would like to ready such that I could help him. Okay. Actually, sorry, scratch that one more time. 
I'm going to cast Guidance. Oh. And uh, what that will do is I, I place my hand on Clay's shoulder and I uh, utter some words quietly under my breath. And the uh, next ability check he makes, he can add a D4 to. Um, yep. And is that a bonus action? That is an action. Okay. Cool. So, very good. So you have done so. Uh, and anything else you would like to do on your turn? Um, no. Okay. Very good. Clay is going to heed Nikos' instructions, and he is going to push and push low at the Yeti's legs and try to see if he can make it slip or fall into the chasm. Um, Nikos, is that kind of your intent? Yep. Okay. Very good. He is rolling with disadvantage, but with an extra d4. Oh my gosh. And he rolls a one. Plus three is going to be a four. So he pushes at the Yeti's leg. You know what? No. With the ground as slick as it is, I'm going to give him an advantage, actually. I feel like those would cancel out because Michael has kind of set the scene for success here. But it's still not very high. It's a seven plus three. Okay, so that is going to be a ten. And now I'm going to have the Yeti roll in a post strength check against this. Um, I'm not sure if the Yeti, because it has taken fire damage, let me check <laughs> one thing. It has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. These dice are cursed. I rolled a one and a four. <laughs> one just <laughs> keeps showing up. Is that you? Is that you using <laughs> oh, my no. dice? That I no, I'm not. I'm not. I should be. I'm going to switch them out yeah, now. What is this? Switch them out, bro. I want to do some damage against you. So we're going to use these dark sea beauties here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, anyway, the um, Yeti slips and begins to topple and I'm gonna have it make a strength check to see if it can grab onto the edge of anything here. Um, but it's a it's disadvantage again. Yeah, no. The Yeti slides down. Now let me review how deep this chasm is here. Unless you guys remember, I feel like it was 80 feet. Do you guys remember? I feel like it was 80 foot. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. so. The Yeti howls as it slides down and you hear a thud and a stillness at the bottom. And once again, my friends, I have failed to provide you with a challenging encounter. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good. You guys are good. I'll give it to give it to you. All right. Um, I think it's pretty horrific that, that that Yeti, as he's falling, if he was tumbling, he could look down and see his dead mate down there already. Yeah. That pretty is pretty brutal. Yes. <laughs> died he, the same way, did didn't live. it, Bert? I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, if he did live, uh, it would be there would be some some rage from the bottom here. Yeah. All right, my friends. Well done. I'm gonna drag this yeti over to our trash bin here. Boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> that recycling bin noise. Can you hear it? Garbage. <laughs> All right. Whew. Did we All lose right. nine hit points of total damage, like health. Like we just got hit once, right? Like Clay got hit once. I got blasted. Yeah, I mean. Oh, you did get okay. Yeah, Clay, Clay took seventeen damage. Um, so there was that, but okay. Um, yeah, so Clay is, um, you know, looking okay. Um, injured, I exhausted, but but not in terrible shape. I'll say that. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, what would you guys like to do here? <laughs> Uh, so Nikos sort of, uh, as the, the Yeti falls over, sort of staggers back a few steps and puts his back against the wall before sort of sliding down and sort of going, <sighs> maybe it's just me, but I think we should climb down this mountain. I'm in agreement with that. Yep, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Paraloo Fishfinger now, says, but, but what about... As Oh man, I can't remember her name now. <laughs> uh, a, uh, it was Asterix. A Asterix. Yes. Yeah. What about Asterix? She was there somewhere on the expedition. It, now, Paralu, is is there even any mountain left to climb? 
Um, what do you mean by that? Or what do you mean by that? I mean, We're in the final chamber, right? Like I, there's nowhere else to go. Right? Um, so you guys are, if I zoom in here, you're right here. Okay. And so there, there is, is yep, yeah, there is a little bit more to climb. Okay. You could, but. I, I assume we are we are already at the top, but perhaps. Uh, what about you the dog? Sorry. No, you st you guys still have to face the boss. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't, uh, don't Nikos, Nikos then uh, you know sort of sighs and gets himself up. He's uh, gonna pack his uh, to go box lunch uh, as he uh, straightens up. All right. Listen, this mountain is treacherous and is clearly teeming with yetis. This may not be the last we have seen. We can't really stay here for too long. I suggest we take a short rest, gather up what we can, maybe tend to some of our wounds. Then we will make one final pass. If she is not on the trail, we cannot find anything but a sign of an attack, then we are going to declare her dead and head there back down. Is this acceptable to you? Parallel would nod sheepishly. Thank you. Rockfar, Fiswick, Clay. Fiswick's just nodding. I think you. I think that's the way to do it, Nico. I agree. Okay. Well, then let us uh, get get prepared. Uh, I'm going to burn up one of my my hit die on some hit points. Yep. And so is uh, Clay. All right. Clay is almost back up to full here. I heal four hit points. There isn't any dead bodies or anything around here that we could loot, is there? Or did Fizzwick notices <laughs> or anything that might have a coin or two on it? No, you guys had already kind of done that last time. There wasn't too much, but I think you probably did write down a couple things. There was like, I don't know, a shore sword or something like that. Um, yeah, you guys kind of looted the place before. And the only new inhabitant is... Papa Yeti at the bottom of the ravine. And the dog's still here, right? Um, I think the dog went back with Garrett. Oh, okay. Yeah. Buckthor, the dog. Buckthor. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> what would you guys like to do then? Would you want to proceed up a little bit? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um,. Re pull up my notes here, which I lost when we restarted. All right, and this is mountain climb. Very good. Uh, can can uh, I have Gruckthor walk to the mouth of the cave and sort of do a check of the outside surroundings and see if there's anything else out there? Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Okay. Twelve. You don't really notice anything. Um, a couple mountain goats <clears throat> bleeding in the distance. Bleating, okay. not bleeding. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was the Yeti's doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there is the corpse of this mountain goat that is laying outside the uh, the mouth of the cave here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys do continue up um, the mountainside a little bit further here. And uh, ahead, you do catch sight of um, a shape in the snow. It does not seem to be moving. Uh, you come to the edge of a vast and deep crevasse with nowhere to go but down. You are at the, pretty much the highest point here. A collapsed tent lies half buried in the snow near the precipice. <clears throat> Jutting out of a nearby snowbank is a pair of blue leather boots. Next to this grim display, a figure in cold weather clothing sits in the snow, her knees pulled in tight to her chest. Horns protrude from underneath the figure's fur-lined hood. What would you like to do? We've got a tiefling up here, Nikos. Um, Nikos will step forward and, um, and um, <clears throat> have a look. I am not a doctor. Um, the Fiswick, can you make a bonfire? Fire, fire, heat! There's no meat! And then he tries to light a fire with his 
bonfire thing. Yes, create bonfire. And you do. And <clears throat> you see now this the face of this tiefling lit up a little bit. And the eyes have ice forming over them, coming from the eyebrows down. You see a glistening. Uh, Fiswick wants to try to hide immediately. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make a stealth check. Eight. Okay. You man you um, you try to hide. <laughs> you don't see any movement at all from this tiefling or from the other bodies sticking out of the snow. Uh Grupfard uh, uh wants to investigate and make sure that the body's really dead. Just waves his hand over in front of her mouth, see if there's any breath. Okay. Yeah, no, you don't notice anything. Yeah. Okay. She looks completely dead and frozen solid. Okay. And Perilu kind of kneels beside her and, oh, no, no. Nate, are the, are the blue boots on the tiefling or are they on some other figure that's sort of like half submerged? But there is another body in the snow. And actually, I, I think I have a picture here, which I should share with you guys. Let me do that a moment. Hopefully it lets me. Can Fizwick take a look around just to see if there's anything going on? It just in the hills around him, any silhouettes sticking out that are staring at us that shouldn't be? Or sure, yeah. Go ahead and make a perception check, Fizwick. And so there's the scene you see before you. Four. Um, uh, okay. You don't, I'd you don't like to. Can I try and pull the body out of the snow? The blue boots body. Yes. Sorry, just just real quick. Uh, as as we know, uh, I've been using Sirenscape for all of our lovely, lovely sounds. I actually have something here Ooh, with that yes. picture. I don't know what it'll do if I push the button. Should I push the button? You should push the button. Definitely. Please do. Okay. Was that the sound of our horrific discovery? Uh, Yes, I think it is. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh-huh. Yes, and at the end of that, Perilou sinks to her knees. No! All right, <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank you for that, and thank you, uh, Sirenscape. <laughs> the um, Fizzwick, you don't notice anything. Um, and um, Alex, you said you wanted to try to pull the body out of the snow. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So yes, um, you, you know, if you clear away some of the snow and kind of pulling this body, you see that it is headless. The head has been torn clean off. It is frozen. Uh, it's hard to say how long uh, this person has been dead. Perilu does not recognize this person, but has heard tales of someone who disappeared up here, uh, who went um, a dwarf. And this does appear to be a dwarven body. Mm. Um, there was also, if you remember, in addition to Ubok's head, there was another head in the Yeti's cave. Okay. Um, a trophy of sorts. Well, this does it. I, th I think all uh, heads and bodies are accounted for now. You find an empty wineskin, a half-eaten block of goat's cheese, and a miner's pick as well on the body. Hmm. Uh, oh, I'm gonna take that cheese. I love <laughs> cheese. And Fizzwick can, grabs can I, the cheese. Can I contest Fizzwick for the cheese? Sure. He's, he's got it in his hands right now, and it's kind of like right here. Yeah. All right. Sure. I'm, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a strength check and see if I can. Yeah, it's it away a tug of you. war over the cheese. Fizzwick, go ahead and make your strength check opposed. I'm pretty weak. <laughs> I've, I'm 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 pretty. Let's see. And it's not my good night for rolling two. Two. Oh. Six, I got a six. Grugfar takes the cheese. That cheese oh, is mine. No, as, as, the, uh, so as they're both, as they're both tug of warring it, can uh, can Nikos <laughs> um, just pull out his um, little little dagger and just sort of cut it down the middle? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So y as soon as Grugfar kind of grabs it. Um, Grugfar is looking greedily at it, and you see a knife kind of just. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, you managed to do so, Nikos. Uh, um, Grugfar begrudgingly 
throws half of it back to Fiswick. Fiswick accepts it greedily and he's just munching away. Uh, Nikos will put the knife away. The display was not necessarily for the two of them, but for the grieving um, bard that's traveling with us while these <laughs> two are like fighting over cheese and these guys, guys like in despair. I'm like, idiots. Um, he, uh, Nikos goes over to the, um, uh, to, to the, the, what was his name? Something being a P. Um, sorry, uh, Paraloo Fishfinger is the halfling. Uh, yeah, it's a. Female. He'll go over to Paraloo uh, and place an arm over his shoulder and say, "She knew the risks when she came up here. No one travels to the height of the world without knowing what the cost could possibly be. I'm sure that she, however she may have died, did not do so with regret." Yes. It's not a good way to die, but we knew the risks. When that Yeti attacked, we split up, we, we fled. Oh, it was horrific. Yes. We shall prepare the bodies to be taken down the mountain to receive a proper burial. Yes, I was, that would be good. I was not close with her. Didn't meet her before the expedition, but that's the decent thing to do. Um, Nikos will take some blankets and stuff from inside and just wrap the body and, um, because, um, Buckthor is still a bit further back with the sled and all that other stuff, right? Yeah, so Buckthor and, um, Garrett actually went back down the mountain. Ah, oh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, cool, I, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess... It would not be hard the, to pull the body, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll, we'll drag it down. Um... At which point, while we're at the, the, uh, are we at the, are we at the top of the mountain? Yeah, you're at pretty much the very peak here. Yep. Nikos will actually take a moment and um, make his way over to like a, a ledge that kind of overlooks uh, as much of Icewind Dale as as possible, like kind <laughs> of seeing the rolling winds uh, carrying the snow across the, uh, the the plains and the various lights illuminating from town. He's just going to take a moment to just sit. And um, and appreciate his surroundings. Since since arriving in Icewind Dale, he hasn't really, you know, done that. Icewind Dale's just been cold and miserable and crap, and you know the people have been cold and miserable and crap. And uh, this is kind of like the first time he's seen something that he can almost perceive as really truly serene. Yeah. Yeah, and it is quite a sight. It's clear enough um, tonight that you are able to see um, a little bit of what's below uh, by the moonlight and the light of the aurora. And it's, it's breathtaking, uh, to be sure. Uh, Gruckvar and Fiswick, what are you guys doing? Um, uh, Gruckvar walks up to Paralu and says... Uh, what was your relationship to this tiefling? Is this a friend of yours? No, I did not know her well. Um, just met on the expedition. Just a fellow traveler interested in going up Kelvin's Cairn. Honestly, she didn't talk much, and when she did, it was usually cursing. Well, but um, yeah, I, said, I suppose it uh, is sad, just the same for someone to, if their life to end this way, ma. But I did want to ask before I did something so crude as see if there's any gold coin on her. Mm -hmm. And he um, proceeds to check the body for any yeah. items of interest. Yeah, she doesn't protest. And on the body, um, there is, you do find a potion of invisibility. Um, you find a leather-bound spell book as well. Um, and I can forward this to you guys. Um, well, I'll just put it here. And I'm not sure uh, exactly how spellbooks work in 5e, actually, but I just put it in the Zoom chat there, um, the, a list of the spells. And I think Fizwick is probably the only one. I'm not sure. Yeah, we can, we can deal with that later. But Fizwick okay. uh, has the arcane um, rogue, so could be some possibilities Fizwick, there. They know what that is, though, like the potion of in invisibility. Like it's a known thing when they pull it, when he pulls it out. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I would say you probably would recognize, um, or maybe it's even labeled, who knows. This wicked gets sitting right next to the gruff bar and he says as he sees the potion of invisibility, oh no, I bet she wishes she was that. <laughs> Have some respect, Fizzwick. He just kind of looks up, ashamed. He can't expect much more from a goblin. <laughs> Clay says she must have panicked. <laughs> um, Nikos will uh, ask to see the Leatherbound spellbook. Uh, even though Nikos is no longer uh, a wizard, per se, um, uh, do I still understand the the book itself? Yeah, I, I think that's reasonable if you if you think it is. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I can't obviously use it to cast these spells at my spell list any, anymore. But uh, Nikos will try very futilely to cast the spells inside the book. So he'll he'll try to cast um, uh, detect magic and nothing, uh, scorching ray, uh, nothing. You know, the, the, whatever's happened to me has changed me to my very core. Even the, the, the nature of my magic has changed. And he takes the book and he says, but maybe I have hope. And he'll, he'll say, do, do you mind if I, I hang on to this? Study it. It's of no use to me. Uh, I, I can't make heads or tails of what I'm seeing written here, so I figure I might as well. Perhaps when we get back down to town, you'll have a chance to inspect it further. I'll uh, put it in my pocket. Yeah. And I'm going to multi-class into wizard. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We are going to... Um, anything else you guys would like to do before heading down the mountain? Oh, I'm uh, definitely going to pee on the mountain. It's <laughs> important. Uh, I okay. want to pee off the mountain. <laughs> Onto the ground below. Mm -hmm. Onto Karakonig. Yes. Um, well, there's one icicle. <laughs> <laughs> Regret. All right, very good. So you guys make your way down, dragging the body of Asterix, um, and without incident, um, you know, seeing nothing more than a couple of mountain goats, you trudge back down the mountain slope <clears throat> to Karakonig, and that is where we're going to take a short break. Um, Thank you everyone so much for joining us. Um, before we uh, take a break, I just want to encourage you to check out uh, Nikos uh, Michael's channel, Dead Aussie Gamer, Twitch, and YouTube links down in the video description. Um, it's got good stuff, really good stuff. And uh, I had the privilege of playing in one of his games about a week ago, and that was great fun. Um, and then we also have uh, links down below to Dark Sea Workshop. So that is Fizzwick's um, Etsy shop of various magical trinkets and goodies. Um, Whoever wins gets to select any of those pendants, uh, any of the dice pendants. And we have not heard the magical f or the the uh, the secret passcode or phrase yet. So stay Almost. tuned for a passcode that will be exchanged between two characters at some point. All right, very good. Uh, we're going to take a short break and be back soon. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Make sure it's really, really...
Hello, we everybody. It. We did it. We're live. You can hear us, I think, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> you thought we'd never come back, did you? All right. Hey, it's good to be back. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. We are going to resume the game here, and I just want to give another thank you to our sponsor as well, Hero Forge, for... Um, for supporting us in our play, and uh, they make some awesome products, uh, an awesome service, so to speak. So definitely check it out. There's a link in the video description, heroforge.com. They're awesome! And so are these guys. Let's begin once again. You guys uh, have made your way back to Kerr Koenig. You see the town now in sight. What is going to be your first stop as you enter here? I think it'd serve us well to find an inn to rest in. What do you fellows think? This would um, agree. I would be inclined to agree. The um, we weren't getting paid for this, were we? You were getting, you were promised a um, reward from. Um, oh, what was his name? The Scrimshando. What was his name? Uh, Keegan. Keegan. Thank you. Yes. Um, who wanted you to go out in search of his husband. He had, and he had said, you know, he could pay you uh, in some of his art. He is yeah. not in this town, though. That's, is that correct? Well, I'm, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, you actually see, um, as you are entering the town, um, there is uh, a, uh, a couple now who is... Uh, who are walking through, and you recognize both Keegan and um, Garrett um, walking together toward uh, the inn, which in this town is the, oh, it's the something light. I can't remember now. The Northern Light. The Northern Light, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you see uh, they are now here together and entering. Okay. What would um, you guys like to do? What, uh, do you see up ahead there? That's uh, Keegan and Garrett. Let, let, uh, I say we uh, hustle on over and uh, see what they're up to. See how they're doing. What do you say? Uh, yes, I agree. Paralu says, I'm just going to take the um, Asterix here over to Frozen Far Expeditions. Um, that's where we left from, and um, I'll make arrangements. Thank you so much for your help. Um, if you ever happen to be in uh, Targos again, that's where I'm from, and I will gladly... Um, Invite you in for a meal or, or something. Gladly try to repay your kindness. Uh, Nikos will bow. Thank you kindly, Paralu. It's much appreciated and uh, get out of this wintry weather inside somewhere where it's safe and warm. All right, Paralu says yes and kind of scoots off. Um, and you see that um, there is someone from Frozen Far Expeditions who is coming over to help um, drag the body, uh, which is kind of wrapped in, uh, in a piece of cloth here. Um, good. So um, you guys um, saw Keegan and Garrett go into the Northern Light. Do you wish to follow? Yes. Okay. Very good. Entering uh, the tavern, uh, the, the common room of the inn, rather. Uh, there are um, good smells and warmth. It is actually morning time here now. Um, probably late morning by now, actually, because you all left kind of during the night, late at night. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's not the the bustling crowd you might expect in the evening, but it is a, a good sized crowd inside the inn here. And you immediately see Keegan and Garrett uh, sitting at a table near the door. You also see in the um, 
uh, two women who seem to be kind of running the place, um, waiting on people. One is behind the bar, one is waiting tables. What would you like to do? Um, Grukvar goes and sits down at the table that uh, Keegan and Garrett are at. Um, yes, and as soon as you do so, Keegan, he grabs you by the shoulders and says, Thank you! Oh, by the gods, thank you! Uh, I couldn't wait any longer. As soon as you all left, I, I left too. I just couldn't stay there in Targos. I couldn't do it. That makes perfect sense. And uh, we did what we said we would do. You did, and I am forever in your gratitude. And here, and he goes into his um, his bag, and he pulls out. He has this kind of leather um, uh, bag, and he pulls out of it a what looks like almost like a velvet, very finely padded. And each individual figurine he pulls out he gives to you is also wrapped in like a, a small piece of leather and he hands you uh, your reward that he promised you. These are pretty finely crafted figurines, um, scrimshaw figurines in what is usually in 10 towns, either whale bone ivory uh, or um, the uh, knucklehead trout also has some bones that are thick enough for this sort of thing. And um, yeah, they're very finely crafted and he hands you some. One of them is a, um, a, sp a spouting whale. One of them is a smiling fox. And there is also an owl, which Fizwick, you would probably notice, looks similar to the owl that you have um, newly acquired from the town speaker's purse and uh, his satchel. <laughs> so that is something um, that, that probably would catch your eye, Fizwick. Um, then you also have um, a, wal a walrus is the last one. So four figurines, very finely carved. And just for the, re uh, for the record, these are worth 10 gold pieces each. Nice. Keegan, I must say, I. Uh... I really go in for the cold hard coin myself, but uh, this is comes in at a close second. Nice work. Yes. Um, well, it's and Garrett comes over and says, "I wish we could do more." But listen, any time that you would like to uh, go on an expedition, uh, you're probably over expeditions. I'm, I may be too for a little while. And Keegan's kind of is looking like wide-eyed at Garrett, like, what? <laughs> but uh, he, he's saying, anytime you would like to uh, go on an expedition, uh, I'm, I always run them, and I will also be willing to train your, you yourselves as guides in some of the winterness, uh, wilderness survival skills I've obtained. So. Now that would be priceless. Uh, I appreciate uh, the gesture. Uh, telepathically, Nico says to uh, to Fizwick, "Did he just offer to train us when we just saved him from a mountain? <laughs> after his, <laughs> after <laughs> nearly his, in, after nearly his entire traveling co company got murdered." I thought he did. <laughs> Is this normal? I don't know. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, if the goblin thinks it's stupid, then it probably is. Um, they kind of, yeah, they're, they're just looking at Grunkvar and engaged in conversation. Yeah, Nico smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. Uh, any, uh, Grunkvar turns to uh, the party and in his hands he has those four figurines and he says, um, take the one that fits your character the closest. and uh, allows everybody to choose their own figurine. Yeah, so I'll type them in the chat here, but there's an owl, there is a um, whale, a spouting whale, um, there is a walrus, and a smiling fox. I think I will take the owl. That's funny, I thought you'd go for that devious fox. 
<laughs> Why? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nico sort of glares and Clay will take whatever's his, left over. Sends his head 180 degrees. <laughs> 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 All right. Fiswick, what do you take? Uh, the walrus. All right. And, um... Oh, I'm getting a message in here. I'm getting a live message here. Uh, it says that Clay takes the walrus. <laughs> oh, man. Do you see that? Do you no, see he's too late. Name? He's too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Fizzwick already took I was going to say, he's not even here, and no. he's still stopping. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> even if he was first. Sorry, Fizzwick is present. <laughs> uh, but hey, Ryan, thanks for watching, man. <laughs> Hope you're having a, a good night. All right. Um, so, yes, um... Alex and Fizwick, I'll let you guys, or Alex and uh, and Ryan, I'll let you guys fight over the last two later. Okay. Um, but but for now, um, you you stick them back in your bag. So um, the um, uh, next thing that happens is there's a Fizwick. You notice um, out of the corner of your eye a familiar face, a tiefling, um, sort of whitish complexion, and she kind of nods to you from the corner. And uh, you recognize her from East Haven. Um, yeah. Um, Fizwick uh, 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 says, um, so he goes over to her and just kind of like. And she would motion for you to have a seat. And she says. He kind of just doesn't even say anything. He just kind of looks at her and. Yeah, and she says, you look familiar. Um, I can't be Adar sure, but oh, continue. Um, a dark day dawns again? I thought so. <laughs> the Dark Sea Workshop. Yes, I've seen you hanging around there. I myself am loosely affiliated as well. It was nice to see you. Yes, Avarice. I don't know I, if we've I, formally met. I, I didn't have much time to think about this, so I'm going to... I just... I know it's been... Uh, 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 um, no need to say anything. Here, so, have a drink. And she slides one over to you. She's got a couple lined up. <laughs> And he takes the drink and he's he's drinking it. Mm -hmm. She says, <clears throat> I hear that associates of the Dark Sea Workshop in East Haven are uh, being asked to return sometime soon. Um, there's something afoot. Not quite sure what, but I'll be headed there myself very shortly. Probably tomorrow or the next day. And she takes a swig. Oh, you know, the shop's been looking for something. There's been an item that the shop wants. We think it is somewhere under this town, actually. Somewhere deep. Oh, my. They've been looking for quite a while. It's some, some type of item of, of, of great power. And it's, they've been searching. I figured when I saw you, maybe they'd sent you out here and you had, you had found the entrance. No, no, I'm just passing through. Um, Is that, hmm. can, can Fizwick really see if she's just passing through or? In... Yeah, why don't you go ahead and make an insight check? Um, 17. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you definitely get the feeling that she's hiding something. Um, not being completely honest, but yeah. Well, I've got some friends over there. You can see the sorcerer and my cleric friend, and we just happen to be looking for something as well. And we might want to know if you were willing to join forces or sharing some information because I don't think that you're necessarily being truthful with me. It's just too strange that we find you here of all places. 
the one I... place that they've been looking and I haven't been to the shop for months and here you are. The one place they think the entrance was. Well, you seem to know a lot more than me. We'll just say that. I haven't heard of any entrance, but thank you for that uh, information. Fiswick talks to Nikos through his little mind connection stone. Sure, setting stone, yep. Is there any way you can probe her brain and see if she knows anything? There's no way she's here by coincidence. And she's looking for an item of significant power. If we can somehow find out the information that she's hiding from us. Well, you can do a brain thing and like, is there a brain thing you can do? Uh, Nikos um, takes a moment and um, contemplates the fact that as a brain gorger, the goblin just asks if he can probe someone's mind and do a brain thing. Um, well, I could. It wouldn't be helpful. Um, you wish for this, uh, this woman to, uh, to divulge secrets? We can have women divulge secrets. Uh, the Theans were good at extracting um, information from people who chose to withheld it. Um, Nikos will um, will walk over and um, and and sit by by Fizzwick. Um As he does so, he uh, pretends to whisper something in Fizzwick's ear. Um, Nikos then uh, then says. Um, apologies, I don't believe we've had the uh, the pleasure. Nikos. Ah, Avarice. I can see this. Now, we are, of course, fellow travelers, wandering, as we say, through uh, Icewind Dale. There are many things here that uh, are of value. Some value coins, some value wisdom. What is it that you value? What is it that you hmm. truly desire? Well, many things, but I suppose someday I'd like to be remembered. Ah. Uh, A legacy. I can understand this. My legacy was recently taken from me, and I struggle now to fight to claw it back from those that did. What are you? Complicated. <laughs> but what is the legacy you seek? Surely it is a little more than a wanderer of lonely dive bars in the middle of Keakonig. Yes, there is more to it than that, to be sure, but... Well... It's also quite complicated. But this I can understand. should you be in East Haven at any point, uh, Fizwick is familiar with the Darksea Workshop. He could show you the way. By all means. I hope we can connect there again some, at some point. Um, Nikos will, um, will bow and say, I'm sure we will. I have a good feeling that... Uh, your legacy will definitely be remembered, Madam Avarice. And she gets up, uh, takes one more swig and says, Well, very nice to have met you. And Fizwick, good to see you again. I should be getting to bed. Uh, oh, wait, uh, no, wait, it's, it's midday. <laughs> I, sh I should be, uh, I should be getting on my way. <laughs> Um, I'm so used to being in taverns and inns in the evening. It's just like <laughs> the way it always is. But um, anyway, um, so she gets up and um, walks away. Um, Once she leaves, Nikos will, will turn to Fizwick and say, your suspicion is correct. There is definitely something more about this, this woman that is um, hard to pin down. It seems that she's multiplied by 
uh, something powerful. You are indeed correct. And this power is not a power that she is seeking for herself. When one talks about legacy, it is one talking from a place where you aren't looking for selfishness. If you were, she would say things like power or money or family or whatever. But saying legacy means that she wants to leave something behind, usually a connection to someone or something. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you have something truly terrifying, something that you're willing to sacrifice even your own life to secure. This makes her very dangerous. Whoever she is to you, Fizwick, I would be careful, very careful. There's a lot of different adventurers that go into the Dark Sea workshop to sell their rares that they find on the various adventures. And they've been sending many people over here. So to find her here right now, there must be something in the city somewhere that she knows about. Well, we are not exactly the most friendly of sorts. I mean, Grakvar is probably the most um, pleasant of us, and that is saying quite a lot. Can Fiswick try to go and uh, act like he has left and go into stealth and come up back around her and see if he can pickpocket her and if there's anything on her? Well, we were in the middle of a conversation, but we'll talk later. Fine. Well, mine, through the mind, aren't right? We're talking through the mind. I, I went over and sat next to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came up to yeah, the yeah. table. But... Yeah, okay, I came okay. up to the table and I was... I was oh, that's I was right, that's right. Okay. Because I wanted to make her sus like okay, so so to, to follow some logic on on a few negotiation mind games, um, whispering to you puts her at a a point where she wants to know something from us, and that actually preps your mind into wanting to say stuff in order to try and get me to say stuff. Um, so doing that and whispering next to you and then going into that conversation led us to know the one thing that she's after, which is of course something for either someone else or something else, which, you know, was what uh, we were talking about just then with, with Fizzwick. So when you when you leave, uh, it's just Nikos um, at the table by himself. Um, he uh, he will look around for Grukvar and Clay as well, just to kind of not be on his own, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, um, well, I don't know, Grukvar, do you think you would have found another table or would you still be with Garrett and Keegan? Um. Do I see that Nikos is trying to like uh, motion me over? I don't know. Is that? Is oh, that I'll, I'll, well, no, I'll, I'll go to you. It's just more. It's just more. I went to go 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 help Fizwick out with his. his oh, okay, little, okay. And now, now yeah. I'm at a table by myself in the middle of a tavern. Yeah, and I'm like he just okay. said with the rune stone. <laughs> instead of talking to me through the mind, he came over and yeah. So okay. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I am, a, and I suspect Clay is also sitting at the table with uh, Keegan and Garrett. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, Michael, would you go over to sit with them? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll go over and sit. Yeah, so they're enjoying some um, some talk. And Fizwick, let's go ahead and see if you can uh, make a stealth check for me uh, to see if... 15. Okay. Yeah, so she walks out of uh, the inn, and <laughs> she's actually walking over to... Uh, frozen far expeditions in that direction. Uh, did you want to try to pickpocket her? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me just. Um, okay. Does I'm she have, have that to... cool looking staff in her hand and a in a raven on her shoulder? Uh, she was carrying a staff. Yes. Okay. And she seems, you know, to be. A magic user of some kind. Um, okay, I gotta search D and D Beyond here because I was not have her up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Just looking for a little passive perception here. No reason. All right. Okay, so you got a 15. Okay, so yeah. Um, she does not seem to notice you um, following her. And yeah, I, I imagine if you want to pickpocket her, you could kind of like maybe anticipate where she's going and 
find her at a moment when there's a few other people passing or something like that. Uh, pick your moment. And if you wanted to try to pickpocket her, you could go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. 19. Okay. Yeah, so um, you, um, you know, reach into like her pouch, which she has behind her. And in that pouch uh, is, um, let's see. Um, wow. Okay. So I'm going to say there's probably 32 gold pieces and, um, in a little, in a little pouch. And, um, there is also a scroll of fireball. And that is all that's in that pouch. Can I dive back into the snow and see if she comes back out with acting any different or uh -huh. or if there's any information maybe I can get from yeah yeah so she goes back into frozen far expeditions uh or goes into frozen far expeditions you see her enter um <clears throat> she exits about five minutes later and um there doesn't seem to be anything um yeah she, she's um acting natural um you know she seems to be a powerful woman um, you can see that from the way she walks, even the way she carries herself. And she uh, walks back to the inn. Uh, Fiswick follows her back to the inn. Okay. Yeah, so I'll say from your vantage point, you're kind of hidden that you could just see her walk back to the inn. And the rest of the party sees her come in. And she goes upstairs to apparently a room that she's renting. Well, Fizzwick just goes over to join his uh, companions there. Okay. Yeah, very good. Um, so, um, at the back in the, the common room of the inn, the Northern Light, um, the uh, there's some conversation, and um, uh, you see a silver dragonborn kind of burst into the door, stumble forward, and um, and then you see one of the two women who run this establishment saying, Oh, Trovis, have you been out patrolling again? And he goes, Always. Have to look out for the good of the town. <laughs> and he kind of walks forward and takes a seat at the bar. Um... Trovis is here, been out patrolling again, bring something warm. And you said, and uh, a, a more portly woman comes out from behind the kitchen. Again, Trovis. Oh, by the gods. You can't be out there in the cold like that, man. Well, somebody's got to find these thieves. I swear, they, just this morning, they were overheard, dogs barking. Footprints in the snow. <laughs> Keep your voice down. You don't want to raise suspicions. The townsfolk are scared enough. No, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Mm -mm. Everything's going to be fine. Fine. <sighs> okay, so Nikos will will um, tap on Grokvaj and Fizwick's shoulders and look at Clay and then sort of, you know, quietly gesture over to um uh to the the somewhat inebriated dry he was a dragon ball wasn't he yes yes yeah, so somewhat dragon inebriated. uh and then stand and and walk over uh, uh Gruk, Gruk far yeah. says to keegan and, and garrett uh, uh excuse us we've got some uh some other business to attend to oh absolutely by all means Okay, so you guys go over to Trovis. Um, um, I say to the the bartender, um, I will have what uh, what he's having. This early, okay. <laughs> and she slides <laughs> one over. What's he having? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it's actually just some some like whiskey. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, I will um as I take it, I I will um look over at uh, Trovis. Patrol not going so well. 
Oh, you again, yes. No, there's more, been more thieving. <laughs> uh, yes. Tell you, uh, over at, uh, well, they took my, my satchel, the thieves did this time. They're getting closer. They know I'm on to them. They're tormenting me. <laughs> and from the kitchen, a bowl of soup comes out, and the, the bartender goes, oh, I, <laughs> you meant that. And she goes back to the kitchen and brings you a bowl of soup as well. <laughs> um, and, um, and he says, and fresh footprints in the snow by the back of frozen far expeditions or some this morning early, which must have been six hours ago. The owner heard some prying of boards and the dog started barking, goes back there, nothing to be seen, just footprints in the snow. It's uh, baffling. I see, did you follow the footprints? No, I was trying to gather party, but, well, gotta keep it down around here. The, uh, the owner here, her boyfriend is hot-headed and follows any trail he can get and, he's, well, he's stupid. <laughs> she's told me to keep it quiet because she's afraid he's gonna go off on some foolhardy search by himself or something or, or with me and I'm, well, I'm not really in adventuring shape these days. No, no, no. It, I mean, you, you look um, you look to be uh, quite the remarkable gentleman. Your scales are still as um, robust as when I'm sure you were young and virile. <laughs> yes. There is nothing wrong with being virile. Stop being such a prude, you... you. <laughs> Woven doorstop. <laughs> Turns to Gruck for and he says, What does virile mean? Strong in your nethers. Strong in your nethers, my friend. Mm. Mm. You catch my drift? Nethers. Yes. Call it the strength of the red where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> he looks more, I mean, his eyes are starting to cross. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like what you need is uh, people who won't necessarily draw attention to the town and to some of its troubles. Someone perhaps from out of town to maybe look into this. If you don't mind checking on those footprints and the bartender comes out and she says, Ali, well met. Pleasure to have you here. Don't listen to a word he says, but... If he's talking about the thieves, they're real. Took our northern light, they did. The namesake of the tavern. <sighs> I'm sorry, they took the the Aurora Borealis. No, I'm sorry. It's a uh, it's it's our a lantern out front, enchanted ah. to change colors. It's kind of our thing. Uh, I see. Well, if there is something we can do to maybe help rid the town of these uh, Nedwells, wherever they might be. Um, I suppose there might be some in a small town like this who would be of suspicion, yes? Well, here's the thing. Many think they're dwarves. Small, kind of wide footprints that, you know, leave an impression of sorts. They're heavy. <laughs> I see. It's, uh, it's strange, but... And then her sister comes out and he says, you talking about the dwarven footprints? Well, this is crazy. Here's the thing. You know... Uh, sorry, just give me a moment here. <laughs> um, dwarves. They're not exactly known for their stealth. Big, heavy creatures. I mean, no offense, she says to Grukvar. Um, okay. And she says, um, no dwarf did this. Someone would have spotted him. Caught him. No, there's, there's some more going on here. Besides, 
hungry dwarves from the mining area. That's a common theory around here, but they're not stealing food. Lantern. I mean, there are things in short supply in ten towns, but they're not stealing practical things. I see. Well, of course, we would be more than happy to assist the town in its time of need, but needs are what, of course, they are. And I'm sure that uh, such a prosperous tavern might be able to offer some recompense for uh, three wayward travelers and their time and efforts. <sighs> well, we don't have much, but we could scrape together a few gold pieces, I'm sure, and a few rounds, some meals, a few nights at the, at the inn. And then Trovis sure. says, and <coughs> I've got some... I've got some silver in a chest. I'll chip in. I'm, I, I appreciate your, uh, your candor and your, your willingness to, to help, but I think perhaps um, maybe this might be a little bit uh, too out of your price range for uh, the services of adventurers. But I, I do have a proposition that might serve of some use. You see, we are looking at creating some semblance of roots, trades within various towns, and of course this fine establishment, though it might be, if thieves and other things are being stolen from this town, I imagine it won't be long before these full tables and happy bellies are scarcely in sight. If we were to perhaps look at doing this of our own accord, perhaps a patronage to this tavern, some small, small portion of the takings on the end of the month. And uh, we could ensure that not only we keep thieves out of this town and tables full, but you also get to claim the patrons of your tavern being the ones who protected this town, even so far as to climbing the peaks of the, uh, the mountains and retrieving lost souls. It is good for business to have heroes uh, patronize your uh, establishment. I did hear about that. Yes, you're making quite a name for yourself here. Although, from what I hear, you also did cause quite a disturbance here. A little, well, a little uh, problem in the market just about uh, a week ago. Well. This was a, uh, a slight misunderstanding between our Mr. Clay and the, uh, the others. We have since, uh, well, we have since spoken of, of this matter, but uh, rest assured, the, uh, the benefits will surely outweigh uh, a, a, a simple street scuffle with, uh, with a barbaric character such as Clay. Mm. Tell you what. We'll talk it over. I'm sure we can work something out. Yes, sleep on it. I'm sure by the morning, we will have everything we need. Deal. Um, you guys are um, <laughs> exhausted, except for Grukvar. Um, it is about midday. Recovering from exhaustion is going to require um, at least a night's sleep, um, but the footprints in the snow might not last a night. So I kind of leave, or might not last, you know, that long. So I'll kind of leave it up to you guys what you would like to do here. Um. <clears throat> is Keegan and, um, sorry, what was the other guy's name? Garrett. Um, Garrett. Keegan Garrett. and Garrett, yeah. Uh, if Garrett is still around, I would ask Grokvar and Fiswick if we want to hire Garrett to track the footprints and then find out where they lead. We can then explore it once we have a good rest in the morning. That's a great idea. I've got a few extra gold. I'll pay for it. Yeah, okay. I, I'm sure. Uh, well, Fiswick, did you want to go and ask Garrett? Yeah. Yeah, Garrett... Fiswick asks him. Yeah, Garrett would, would probably kind of say, I'm... I'm in no shape for it myself. I... 
just woke up from some rest and I need to head back there soon. Honestly, just came down to the common room to fill my belly. Um, but Jartha, the guide that uh, you hired to take you up the mountain, she might be a good fit for this one too. She's got a dog sled too. Um, Biswick, how would you reply to that? Okay, how much money do you want? Well, I think she would probably uh, require, well, you'd have to ask her, but I'm guessing for, the, for a dog sled and a, a day of a guide, probably about 10 gold pieces. Fisbeck gets out of his pouch and gives him the 10 gold. Oh, no, no, it's for me. Jartha, over at Frozen oh, Far Expeditions. Jartha. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yes. Um, okay. I'm sorry I can't be of more service. Up. I'd be happy to help you. I just, I'm not fully recovered from the ordeal on the mountain. Okay. All right. And, um, yeah, so... Um, do you guys want to go over to Frozen Far Expeditions real quick and see if Jartha uh, is there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. If, if you want to get something done, you, you, right, you, you, sometimes you've got to do it yourself. I say we head on over there and uh, at least take a, a quick look and uh, maybe a brief investigation can set us on the right path for tomorrow when we, when we wake up. Yeah, so they... Um, um, or so yeah, if you guys wanted to head over to Frozen Far Expeditions, um, it's you know a very short walk, and you could do so. Um, anything else you want to do here at the inn before you leave for there? We should ask what uh, my little friend from the shop was doing while we're over there. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. All right, so. Sorry, I just realized I had a, my, my hand over Alex, my, my Zoom <laughs> hand over right over Alex's head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't screw things up, Nate. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, very good. So you guys head over to Frozen Far Expeditions. You see um, uh, that the, oh, let me see the shopkeeper's name. You do see Jartha there, and she seems to be in the back tending to some dogs, feeding some dogs and um, just kind of generally having a good time and kind of playing with them and, you know, doing the whole scruff of the neck sort of stuff with, with these dogs that seem very happy to see her. Um, and the owner of Frozen Far Expeditions is also there, um, whose name is uh, a Tennis Swift. Um, and you guys had met him before. He had kind of uh, instructed you to go find Jartha over at the tavern earlier. Um, oh, welcome back, welcome back. Good day to you there, Tennis. Uh, I heard you've done a good deed finding those uh, travelers, mountain climbers. Oh, oh, we're always doing good deeds. You know us. One good deed after another. That's what we're known for. Uh, let me ask you here. Uh, did you hear some wood prying at the back of your store oh, earlier you today? Heard. You heard. Yes, yes. Someone was trying to get in, maybe trying to steal a sled or some dogs, but stupid. Of course the dogs are going to bark. Of course the dogs are going to bark. It's about 6 a.m., I'd say, and, well, uh, went back there. Nothing to see at all. Nothing but footprints. I see. I see. Now, now, let me ask you, I need a quick rundown here, a quick inventory. For what I know, they, these thieves, whoever they are, they've stolen the Northern Light Lantern. But that's not where they stopped there. They've stolen other things as well. Can you tell me what else they've taken? Oh, let's see. There was a, a pair of goats, uh, two goats, stolen from the local tavern. Uh, a small sack of pearls, um, stolen from our establishment here. Someone had come in and paid with them. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, I think. Oh, Trovis says his satchel was stolen as well. Oh, no. Um there must have been something else I'm forgetting just yesterday. Um, no, I, so, think, I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to connect mentally to Grokvar. Grokvar, let me see if I can run some logic behind you. 
It seems as though this woman is under the impression that Targos, the dragonborn patrolman, is making things up. At six in the morning, dogs, of course, will bark. Upon investigating, they found footprints leading away from the expedition site, but are also fully aware that there are thieves who have been stealing things throughout town. If the dogs are barking at 6 a.m. and you find the footprints, do you not find it odd that you would simply dismiss that as being nothing? Um, I think she is hiding something. Well, let's let's see what else they've got to say. Um, and then uh, Grukvar says to, uh, it's tennis. A tennis, A-T-E-N. A, yeah, a tennis, says to a tennis, um other than other than us have you seen anybody that might raise your suspicions no i mean there's a strange tiefling that stopped in here and uh was curious about well uh the body actually that was brought back um but no nothing else mysterious really but these thieves i mean it's almost like they're invisible it's very strange, very strange indeed. What was the tiefling looking for? Was this tiefling uh, of relation to the the corpse that's resting here today? No, I don't. I don't think so. But she was curious. Just said that she had heard there was a a dead body brought down from the mountain and uh, came to just ask about who it was. Hmm. All right. Um, how long have you been here, Tennis? Oh, years and years. And, uh, were, were you concerned at all this morning when you, when you saw those footprints? Did they worry you at all? Uh, I very, very concerned. It's got to be those same thieves. I'm not sure, but it's honestly a little bit frightening to me. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, keep your eyes sharp. If you see anything else, let us know. Absolutely. Um, I I think we should head over to Jartha now and see if uh, mm -hmm. we can make a deal. Yeah. So you see her back there, and you know she would say, "Oh, good. Glad you made it back in one piece. You look tired." Well, it's true. Some rest. That's uh, definitely true. I am uh, definitely wobbling around a bit up here on my legs at this, at this late hour. Uh, we got a question to ask you. We've got something else we, we need some help with, and, and it's something a little closer to home. You won't have to go to the top of the cairn for this one. Oh, absolutely. What can I, what can I do for you? There are some uh, tracks behind uh, Frozen Far Expeditions, and... Uh, we don't have the time right now. We, we've simply got to get some rest uh, to, to track them ourselves. But could we hire you to follow them to their to their source and uh, and get us the information as to where they go and if you see anyone and any other related information? Could you do that for us? Absolutely. Let's let's go back there and I'll, I'll give you a look at them right now and I'll I'll gladly for uh, well, I don't know four gold pieces um, head out there. I'm curious anyway. All right, well, let's take a look and uh, we'll see if that'll, the four gold pieces will cover it. Mm -hmm. So you guys head out to the back um, and, um, and she kind of says, see this board? This board is loose. I'm trying to pry this one apart or something. And well, here's the tracks. Uh, can I inspect the pried boards? Sure, yeah. I mean, it looks like um, there are some chunks of wood missing, like perhaps there was a dagger or something that was uh, that was used to pry. And then um, you do see definitely some tracks um, okay. that appear dwarven in size. And Grukvar, as a... Well, yeah, you, you would definitely, you know, as a dwarf realize that the, the weight is consistent with, you know, a footprint that, that a dwarf would leave. Yep. Okay. What would be behind this board? What would be 
if I'm trying to estimate, like what would I be guessing they're trying to get to as opposed to just going through a window or a door or whatever? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it just looks like perhaps they were trying to get into um, the shop in general, Frozen Far Expeditions. I uh, maybe didn't realize that, oops, this is the kennel part here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I still have a mental link with Nikos? Sure. Yes. Yep. Um, I say to Nikos, uh, sure enough, this is some kind of dwarf in kind, but uh, I think it's possible from looking at the way that these legs move. I mean, to be honest with you, it's very similar to me. This could as well be me or one of one of my kind, and I I don't know, but uh, we could have Durgar. That's our that's our target here that we're looking for. Um, as you probably well know, uh, they can turn invisible, among other things. Something that, you know, your average hill dwarf wouldn't be able to manage. Um, I, I, I say this to you now because my concern is they could be looking at us as we speak and we can't see them. I don't want to send this Jartha to a certain death. No, this makes sense. I think we still need to send Jartha. Keeping in mind, of course, that... Uh, our job is not to protect every single c civilian here. And Jatha, as a finder of guides up, up the mountain, she is more than accustomed to being able to deal with harsh situations. We're not asking her to confront these creatures. We're asking her to simply follow the tracks. However, you do raise a good point. We should have her mark the trail so we can find it later as well. At the end of the day, if we don't act now, we might lose them altogether. Mm, that's so a good point. So we either sacrifice Jatha, who is currently fresh and good to travel, or we can go right now, which I can guarantee you I have one good spell in me left before uh, I'm just an exhausted old man. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a husk myself of uh, not exactly at my tippy top, so... All right. Uh, then I turn to Jartha and I say, Jartha, uh, why don't you follow me inside? I, I'd, I'd like to, to uh, talk about our deal. Certainly. And she follows you inside. Okay. Um, have Nikos and Fiswick followed me inside as well? Yep. Okay. And Clay? Um, I'll... Uh... I'll, I'll do so a bit slower. I, I kind of, like, after what Grokba said about they might be here watching us, mm -hmm. I kind of want to watch the snow and just see if there's any, like, dead-end footprints. Like, you know, footprints, like, I go to here and then stop, and I'm like, hmm, you know. <laughs> yeah. just, like, they, only, they only go three paces. Yeah, yeah, They're, yeah, like, yeah, five, feet, like, <laughs> like five feet away, there's just, like, 35 like, different little invisible dwarf feet standing. Yeah. Or, they, or they could be like up a tree or something, you know what I mean? Like they could be Good literally point. right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't really see anything, any movement or anything in the snow, Nikos. Fiswick, what do your goblin eyes see? Can uh, Fiswick see anything out of ordinary? No, I mean, it doesn't. Fiswick, as an expert in stealth, would definitely know that, like, you know, this, this is a dwarf trying to be stealthy, but yeah no <laughs> um that's yeah um it would be probably uh to your eyes you would probably kind of laugh and scoff at the attempt at stealth in that is evident in these footprints and you don't notice anything else any other movement okay once we're inside i take jartha sort of back by the sled dogs farther away from um a tennis and I say, um, I think, I think that four gold pieces is is plenty fair. I'm happy to give it to you, but let me say this to you now: be careful out there. Keep your wits about you. Make sure to mark the trail surreptitiously, 
such uh, in, in a non-obvious way so that we can find it back, but it's not necessarily obvious what you're doing. Hmm. I would say, particularly if these tracks lead out of town into any sort of deserted, barren, abandoned place, be very careful. Do you understand me? We don't know exactly what we're up against with these thieves, but I don't want them to get the jump on you. I Are you comfortable will... with that risk? Hey, I'm comfortable with that. I'll have my dogs and uh, I'll take the sled and be swift and not put myself in any positions where I could be ambushed or anything. You know, they say if you're trying to catch a rabbit, you never walk straight at it. You walk around it and you get slowly closer and closer with the spiral each time. And that's how you get the jump on them. And that's what I'd like you to do when you follow these tracks. Don't stay right over top of them. I don't want whoever may be out there to see that you are tracking them. Do you understand me? Absolutely. I won't insult your intelligence any further. I'm sure you're very experienced in tracking, so I'll leave you to it. Uh, Hi. Just a quick question. Can my telepathy create images inside people's heads? Uh, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can technically talk, but if I like imagine a picture or someone in particular, can I, can I create? Sure, them, we'll like, go with, image? yeah, we'll go with, sure. Okay, so I'm going to implant the image uh, for Fizzwick of Grokfa running circles around a snow rabbit. <laughs> inside his head. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at, uh, at Fizzwick and just kind of gives him an odd look. Ignore, ignore the goblin. You just stay at your task. Uh, we don't always know what he's doing. He's like the wind blowing. Uh, he's, he's an odd one. I've uh, spent enough time with him to know that, but you're fortunate to have him aboard. Let's just say that. All right. Well, I'll be off immediately. You all need to get some rest. Uh, fair, uh, fair travels, I hope. Thank and you. Take it easy. And you see her starting to get the, the sled ready and the dogs ready. And uh, you guys can make your way back to the inn if you would like to. Yes, indeed. Yes, let's do it. Okay. So, um, you guys managed to get a room. Uh, is there anything else, or get rooms, perhaps? Um, and we'll say, um, you know, the uh, modest rooms here would probably cost about five silver pieces each, um, if you want to, or um, you could try to share a room with a bunk or something like that if you wanted to reduce the cost. Um, Fizzwick offers to pay for everybody off of his newly found 32 gold pieces. Oh, dang. <laughs> that was a oh, good find, man. That was a that was a pocket I, I, pick. I will not I will not decline. Ooh, right. Such sudden generosity is quite suspicious, but I won't turn it down. I appreciate it. <laughs> um and besides, soon we will own this tavern. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, and actually um the, pay, uh, the the sister comes out and actually scolds uh, her um, uh, the bartender and says, "No, they we're not charging them." And she's like, "Oh, oh, I for, I'm sorry. Yes, of course, staying here free of charge, and um, we'll have some meals sent up to your room if that's all right. You look exhausted. This would be greatly appreciated. You are most hospitable hosts. Thank you. Thank you." And you guys head off to bed. Um, the um, sounds of the tavern below are getting a little more raucous as you fall into your slumber, but you're tired enough where it doesn't matter. The evening crowd, um, you know, roaring with laughter, mugs banging together, a cure there, a glass breaking on the floor. Um, the normal sounds of the hustle and bustle of a tavern, and you fade off into sweet sleep. Um, Grukvar, as you are sleeping, you, um, you begin to see footprints in the snow in your dreams, and the, they're walking away from you, and as you're watching these footprints, almost hypnotic, almost like watching sheep jumping over a fence for you. 
crunching and just kind of lightly impressing in the snow, all of a sudden you see whew, a body, the face of a Dwargar, staring right at you, and you've startled awake. You're safe. You are in your room. It's just a dream. And that is where we will end the session. Wow. Okay. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for uh, an awesome session. And uh, yeah, for keeping me on my toes with, with, yeah, I don't know. It's just always fun to see what you guys do. And uh, it's one of the joys of being a DM is when you plan things and then it's like, oh, nope, they're going to, you know, this, this little twist and turn. And sometimes it's something that I improv that like ends up taking things in a different direction. And it's awesome and it's fun. And you guys really roll with it really well. So thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah. No, thank, thank you, Nate. You uh, like this as, as a storyteller. It's always so, so much of, uh, especially how I role play, um, relies on being able for a GM to create like such a great scene, and um, you really kind of capture that every time we go into into a new scenario or into a new setting. Like everything is just there for you to talk with, interact with, touch, play with, uh, and that's the best kind of games you can play. Well, thank you. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, well, I'm gonna let you guys um, uh, go ahead and plug anything you would like to. Um, Michael, anything you guys, you want to mention that you've got coming up on your channels? Uh, I'm actually on break for a little bit. Um, I have um, one game for my. Well, I have my pay. Actually, no, there, there's one thing. So, my Patreon at Patreon.com/slash Dead Aussie Gamer with a capital D A G. Uh, is going through a little bit of a rejigging, I guess. And for the next two days, uh, I'm going to be keeping my $40 tier, which is a game, a weekly game with me throughout the month um, on Mondays and Saturdays. I'm looking at if I get enough people interested, boosting that up to a third day during the week. Um, but as of next year, that's going up to $50. So anyone who's still on the $40 tier will carry over indefinitely. Uh, so anyone who wants to get in on that before uh, before then, uh, that's it. Uh, it'll also include things like a one-on-one -on -one session with me to help work on your games and any issues that you might have with your campaigns, uh, as well as some extra goodies uh, that I do from my channel where I give advice videos, um, so you can go watch them. But then my Patreons also get like kind of like a little sort of chilled out session, like little little audio clip of after that, like more a little bit extra on top of any of the topics I make. So yeah, that's uh, that's all happening next year and in, uh, wow, in ne like next week now, I guess. Yeah, it's coming up, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's that's really cool. And yeah, and as someone who has had good talks with Michael about, um, you know, games and, and the art and science of dungeon mastery, um, I can attest that, you know, this, this guy knows his stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, Fizwick will... What's going on over in ye old Dark Sea workshop these days? Just wanted to make sure um, people actually heard the thing because I did have, you know, I got a weird voice. And so you could <laughs> maybe have like, I don't know. I heard it, but I don't know what he said. So that's my most concerning thing. I've got a lot of, uh, so just what, maybe somebody can chime in on the chat. See, if, did you guys hear it? Don't put it in the chat. Like, you know, because if you put it in the chat, you're... Affirmative or negative to hearing yeah. a special phrase, yes. You don't want to um, give the answer out because technically it is something you're supposed to be listening for. So did you hear the phrase correct? You know, and we'll even take close to. How about that? We'll even take close to the <laughs> phrase. Um, been working on a set of Dice Masters. Um, you guys might have seen me maybe if you like Dice on some of the Dice groups over the last weekend. Kind of made a little impression with some Galaxy Dice. And uh, that got me fired up. So um, I've been cranking out, you, Nate, like how many days now? Like three days in, in a row now. I've been sitting there grinding, doing some live streams. Yeah. So you can head on to the Dark Sea Workshop Facebook. You can actually see me working. Going to kind of have this kind of like shop window thing where you can just kind of see me. Um, well, you won't see me, but you'll see like the work being done. Uh, so dice are coming. If you guys want those kind of see those necklaces and say, I like the, I'd like a set of dice. Yeah. Give, give me a couple yeah. weeks. And yeah, I can definitely say that if I can, I'm trying to mess with my focus here, see if I can figure it out. There we go. Okay. So I've got some beauties here that, um, that Will sent me that I'm uh, pretty, pretty thrilled about. Oh, you know what? I think my autofocus, my autofocus is already on. I'm a dummy. 
Um, can I hold them well enough to be seen? Well, let's just try this. Check these bad lads out. Just absolutely gorgeous. And video does not do them justice here. You got to see them in person to appreciate. Oh, yeah, here's, the here's thing, this. Like, they're chromatic. So like the lighting really affects like that one glows and it glows like what? White almost. Yeah, it's like a really bright white. So yeah, uh, beautiful dice. So I'm really excited to see you. Um, see what, what is coming in the Dark Sea Workshop. So definitely check them out. There's a link to the Etsy shop in the video description. And stay tuned um, next session um, to see if, uh, yeah, you can um, win something from the shop. Did, and, they, did um, they say that they heard it? So let's see. Um, Michael or McKinley says no. Jake says no. Um, <laughs> Lance says um, if they didn't hear or couldn't understand, do they deserve to win? <laughs> so I think that might be a yes from Lance, but I don't know. Um, yes, there you go. You can always watch it and see if you can find it. And I'll just give the hint that, yes, you can watch it, and it's shortly after the break in the in. The inn. Is Maybe that we can have them message me on my my – my dark sea workshop facebook or something Ooh, or there you go yep maybe you maybe go follow um the dark sea workshop facebook page and then message will and see if uh that's that can be another and way if to nobody get it. messages me and everyone's like we didn't hear it we'll figure out some better way to do this and we'll just yeah. we'll pick thing. everybody that was here and just go from there everybody that left a comment that's plan b if there this doesn't go. work we'll go to plan b everybody that left a comment gets a uh, uh entry yes that's fine <laughs> we'll figure <laughs> something out but yeah. either way some people are getting some free cool stuff and um, yeah yeah it's beautiful all right um cool well um thank you guys so much for hanging out and for weathering the the technical difficulties this was an epic one so woohoo we did it though we got to play D D, and people got to watch us and hear us too <laughs> so uh, what more could you ask for all right. Thanks again, guys. Um, we're out, and we'll see you again in two weeks from today. Goodbye.